Hi everyone, it is great to see you. We are starting our April garden tour in our backyard by one of my favorite beds, the daffodil and daylily bed. So right now we have our Congress daffodils in bloom. They have that beautiful darker orange center to them. And now that oh, they've been in bloom maybe a week and a half already, now that they're sort of going to be getting a little past and their foliage dying back, the daylilies really do come up and overtake them. Um, it's always shocking to me how that works. In fact, I'm going to try to mark some areas here where I can plant some more bulbs. Last fall, I looked at it and went, oh, there's just no more space here for daffodil bulbs. But when I see it like this, not all grown up, then I go, yeah, we can squeeze in more daffodils. We continue the daffodils and the daylilies, and we have some more great structural elements here. We have our Chanticleer pear. There's actually two of them. Um, and these are just great trees because they stay really narrow and on the fairly small side, so you can fit them close to the house. The hummingbirds love to perch on their real skinny little um, twigs here, not twigs, branches. <laughs> and uh, it just, it's a nice tree to have in the garden that doesn't take up a lot of space. And then back behind, we have a great lilac tree. Let me jump up here for a second. Okay, so this lilac tree, the first year we were here, had maybe one blossom, literally. Last year, maybe three. And now, I'm so excited because it's covered in buds here, which I think will be coming out maybe next week. And we'll be able to see them sitting inside and through the window. So, um, yes, thank you, lilac bush. I don't know what we did different, but it's, it's doing great. I call this my shade garden. So you can tell there's just a ton of moss. We do get a lot of shade as soon as these trees leaf out. This is a Kusa dogwood. Um, gets beautiful white flowers in the early spring. And when we moved in, this was really all covered with Pachysandra and our climbing hydrangea. So this climbing hydrangea on the fence is gorgeous. Um, it's overtaking things a little bit. <laughs> climbing hydrangeas can get 30 feet tall. So usually people grow them on something taller than a little picket fence. Um, but on the picket fence, it's sort of spread out. I imagine it's been here a long time. We have a real thick trunk at the base of this. And it started to overtake the garden. So I'm sort of taking that back. We have a boxwood that will be pruned into shape here. And I'm adding a bunch of hosta. So you can't see much of them yet, but they are starting to peek out. I'm going to be careful not to step on any. So back here we have afterglow, we have a guacamole. Um, I have a number of newer ones that I put in stained glass and they're all just starting to show. And it's just so hard to imagine that they get so big and cover so much of this. I've kept a little bit of Pacassandra over here. I'm not sure whether I'll pull that later or keep it to toe through the hosta here. It is super rooty back here and really hard to plant anything. I have another afterglow pasta coming up. Big and lime and beautiful. I had two. Don't see the other one at the moment, so hopefully it will come back. All of my hydrangea are out from the shed today. It's pretty warm. We're sort of getting used to the weather out here. Here's our shed. And oh my gosh, so excited about this project here. Sorry, I said we are going to the front, but we're not yet. Um, this little bed here, we are redoing this year. So it used to be all gravel like this. It has now been dug out. It has good soil in here. Um, I did lift the clematis out and put it back in. Hopefully it survives. And more daylilies going in here. Daylilies may be interspersed with daffodils. I'm not quite sure but it's just adorable. I do window boxes here too. Um, I think I could live in the shed. They put heat in it and water, but it's really awesome. This way, we have three plum trees. We just passed that one. These are flowering plums and they're a little bit past right now, but they give us really, really pretty pink flowers. And once again, when you're inside and you look out and you see those pink flowers, they're one of the first things that bloom and it's just so cheerful and happy. 
Having a big fence around the backyard is also great because it keeps the deer out. This is what I call my moss pathway. Very, very shady here. So I'm trying to keep the moss going and I've added a few of the hosta. So this is the hosta here, rainbows end. Really, really pretty, has sort of a stripe down the middle um, that last year my chipmunk ate. So literally I could come out and I would find the leaves chewed off and like half down the chipmunk hole. So <laughs> I think the chipmunk thinks that I just planted a restaurant right outside of its hole, which I sort of did, but I'm really pleased that it's coming up this year. Maybe it will make it through. If not, we'll have some very, very happy chipmunks. I had some more hosta. Oh yes, it's up. Look over here. This is so exciting. This is my mighty mouse hosta. And I actually just ordered another one because I was so sure this one died. Um, but now I get to have two, which is even better. So I look forward to sharing the season with you. There'll be big changes over the next month. Um, make sure that you like and subscribe down below and I'll see you soon in the next video.